All right, in this video, I'm gonna provide an update on the signal quality of the RTK antenna for the Luba robot mower. Thanks to all of you who have watched my first two videos. Please uh, keep an eye out for more updates as I'm going to compare this to the Husqvarna mowers that we have at one of our other properties. Also, if you are interested in uh, buying the mower, please check my affiliate link down below because I will get a percentage of that sale. Again, that is in no way going to impact the bias of my opinion on this. I have videos coming out about the good and the bad that I've learned so far about this mower, and those will be coming out shortly. Okay, it's been a few weeks now since I had this temporary setup with the RTK, and I wanna test out some locations here because a lot of people have been asking about what exactly creates a good signal from the RTK to the mower. But I did run into one problem. <clears throat> I have this antenna just zip tied, as you saw in my previous video, temporarily to my satellite dish. And a big uh, storm must have came through and rotated this just a hair. I could see from down on the ground it was turned maybe like five degrees messed up all the positioning of my mower. It's facing the wrong direction, doesn't know where the charging station is, all that stuff. So make sure uh, that your RTK is securely fastened. Obviously this isn't gonna be the recommended way anyway, cause this was just temporary, but what I'm gonna do here is tighten up these straps uh, so that that doesn't happen again. Today's just gonna focus on what makes a good signal and I'm gonna go all the way around my property here and try to find out if there's any dead zones, any places that I'm not getting a signal from this. So now that the trees have filled in with leaves, I also wanted to do a check on whether that's gonna affect the signal from my RTK to the mower itself. All right, first things first, we're gonna tighten these guys up. So this doesn't move again until I'm ready to permanently install probably on the Daddy. probably on the chimney Daddy. all right that's a much much tighter using this uh, zip tie tool I feel confident that that's probably not going to move again at least as easily as it did the first time. Okay, so the first thing I look at here is the app because they did make an update to how they report the positioning and the connection to the reference station. And I think it's a lot more straightforward. So I'm actually glad I held off on making this video um, until this was done. So back in one of my earlier videos, I showed how the Luba was reporting its positioning and they were using the number of satellites it was receiving and then a positioning status, but it just gave you a number. You had to look up in the manual what that number stood for. And then also an age of differential, which was a time period. But again, it was kind of unclear about what these were actually reporting. So here's the new update. It still gives you satellites. And if you read their manual, they're gonna tell you that both of those numbers need to be 20 or above. Then there's a positioning status which they're reporting as the number four, which it can be a value from one to five, but they included whether that's bad or fine. So in this case, it's showing fine. And from what I can tell, this is directly related to how many satellites the mower is connecting to. So if you see fine, you're good. If it's not, it's going to say bad, or it's just going to be completely blank. Then the second one here that again is much more straightforward is connection to reference station, which has the number, but again, also gives me a label telling me whether it's fine or not. So this makes it a lot easier when I'm doing my test here to see uh, if I have a good positioning and if I don't, whether it's um, because of my satellites or because of the reference station. I think what we're gonna find out here is that a lot of my bad positioning is just because of a lack of satellite connection and not a problem with the radio connection to the reference station. All right, we got the RTK fastened again, and the problem 
The reason I noticed it is because um, it would actually go out and mow, but it would come back and like stop three feet away from the charging station. And uh, when I pull up the app, it was like showed it pointing in a different direction and all that. So I'm just assuming that it wasn't getting proper positioning angles from where it thought the RTK was. So that's fixed. It's doing a quick firmware upgrade right now. Uh, we're going to drive this around. This is the first spot. This is kind of my uh, temporary charging station spot here. Uh, let's start with the farthest possible place in the yard that it would cut. I am as far away as we can go and positioning status still fine at a four. Connection to reference station is now bouncing between 1.7 and 3.2, but still says fine. And we're probably, if I had to guess, 200 to 250 feet away from the reference station. And I'm blocked by uh, a little bit of the roof and three giant trees. So all good right here. All right, next spot I'm gonna try is actually, I have my camper parked against the house right now. And I'm just gonna kind of use that to see. So out in front of camper, as you can see, I have good positioning and good connection to reference station. So even though the camper is blocking the line of sight to the RTK, it's not inhibiting uh, the radio signal uh, to the point where it doesn't connect. Now, if I go under the camper, obviously I'm gonna lose that satellite signal to the mower. And as you can see, the positioning status goes blank because I don't have enough connection to satellites but my connection to the reference station is still fine. So uh, in this case, and what I'm finding a lot of these cases in my test here, I'm connecting fine to the RTK. It's just a matter of whether I have positioning status via satellite to the mower. Okay, this next spot, I'm gonna try to see if my stone farmhouse is gonna block this signal. So this is the far right side of my house. The RTK antenna is on the far left side of my house. So that signal is going to have to go through uh, basically 24 inch stone walls, which is what this house is made of. So just to get an idea of whether the stone is going to be blocking this, let's nestle this up right. Okay. Right there. Let's give that a second. So that's, that's going through, that's going through quite a bit of stone. Uh, I'll actually be pretty impressed if I'm still getting a signal here. Uh, we say fine. Positioning status fine. A four. That's good. So here's a spot we just did. We're going to rotate to the right into the back corner back there. And again, that's going to be on the direct opposite side of the house from the, ref from the uh, RTK. Okay, so out here in the back corner, again, we have a, I can, I can see the antenna from here. It's not even blocked by the house. And uh, we have good positioning and good connection to reference station. All right, let's try the front of the house, which is where I initially, if you saw my second video, had the charging station set up and it wasn't working for me. So let's see if that works this time around. Okay, so in this other location, it's kind of between my house and the camper here, regardless of where I tried it, the only reason I'm getting a bad positioning is because I'm losing satellite connection to the mower. And you can see here, I have a lot, but just not quite enough. So my positioning status is bad, but again, connection to reference station is good. So, so far, any issues I've had is strictly related to a blocking of satellites to the mower, not an issue of RTK signal to the mower. 
All right, so trying to be as kind of methodical as I can about this, right here, I have good signal. As soon as I come, as soon as I get to this position, nothing. All right, we're on the opposite side of the house, still with a good signal. I have a stretch of property here that goes another 200 feet straight out. We're gonna drive it past that, past the snowplow, past the old 89 Grand Wagoneer, past the 2006 uh, F350 6.0, which will be for sale soon if anyone's interested. And I'm gonna go way out into the weeds there and we'll see, uh, we'll see what we end up with. All right, so even out here, again, I am 300 feet from, maybe 250 feet from the reference station, fine connection. The only issue out here is really dense tree cover and that's providing poor satellite connection. So my positioning status is bad, but it's only because there's a ton of tree cover out here and I'm not connecting satellites well enough. So interestingly out here, my positioning status says bad, but my satellite connection does say 27 and, you know, low 20s, which according to the manual should be enough. I'm not sure why, why I'm getting bad positioning. All right, so I drove it around in a circle and I'm back in the same spot where I was getting bad positioning and now you can see it's back to fine. Uh, so I'm not really sure why it was triggering that. Again, connection to reference station at the whole time was good, uh, but my positioning was bad. So maybe someone could chime in um, with some experience as to what might be causing that. Because again, my satellite numbers looked fine, but my positioning status uh, was labeled bad. I'm not sure what the reason was for that, but I'm literally in the same spot I was. All right, so I hope those tests with uh, what I was experiment experimenting with um, help some people in determining where to place their RTK. I've yet to find a situation in my yard where the signal from the mower to the antenna was a problem. All my problems to this point have been satellite signal to the mower itself, as far as I know. If I'm wrong about that, please uh, you know, speak up, uh, leave a comment below, because again, I'm just trying to figure out uh, exactly what the requirements are myself uh, of, the, of the mower. My next step is going to be start driving this thing down the street and see how far away from my house I can actually get before I lose signal to my RTK. I have a couple thoughts on uh, kind of the good and the bad so far of this, but I'm kind of holding off that video because uh, my motion has been putting out so many updates that have been addressing a lot of these issues that I feel like as soon as I shoot that, they're going to fix it. Uh, they've already fixed a bunch of things that I would have considered kind of issues with the mower and they've done that through just software updates. So uh, I want to give you opportunity for uh, their updates to continue to push through before I really get critical about any, um, any issues with it. Other than that, it's been going at my house now for about a month or so uh, and been doing pretty well. If anyone's waiting on theirs and has any questions, please feel free uh, to hit me up or if you're considering buying it and have questions, definitely hit me up. Otherwise, be on the lookout for more updates and hit that subscribe button to check out the rest of my videos. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to stay up to date on all my new videos in the world of property management, renovation, Airbnbs, real estate investing in general, and pretty much any other project I get myself into. Thanks again. Appreciate the support. Don't forget to leave a comment below.